penning her passion for the sensational brand, Dania's blog suddenly went viral and caught the attention of Dean and Darcy Crystal, beauty industry veterans and founders of Olaplex. Five years later, Danielle is a spokesperson for Olaplex, previously heading up the North American Pro Division, but she's also the guest host on QVC in both USA and UK and host of the official Olaplex podcast, Beauty Uncovered, which I am on as well, so do check that out. Danielle, thank you so much for being on here today, and I'm so excited to get this conversation going. Cash, I'm like really excited to talk to you again because you were so much fun the last time we talked. And I love how this is like a role reversal where now I'm asking you the questions and I love that I know it's, it's so, so I don't often get that. right <laughs> I know <laughs> so yeah but you've been the most amazing host so I hope I can do you justice and pretend the favor so um you know I asked all my guests the same question and I'm I would love to ask you the same which is who in a nutshell is Danielle Frank oh my gosh that's Uh, Well, I always say, the first thing I always say, I am um, a single mom of three boys, and that is my most important thing in the whole entire world for me. Um, But I am also, um, in heart, a creative hairdresser, which is something that I'm very passionate about. But in that, I like to empower people. I mean, that has been the reason why I got into the industry that I'm in, is because I really wanted to empower women and men um, and really... I would say actualize the best version of themselves. So uh, from there, you know, working for Olaplex has kind of helped me do that in a very big way, which is exciting. Amazing. And I mean, what a brand to be working for. But I, I would love to know kind of what got you into hair care in the first place and what inspired you to to get into you the know- world of hair. <laughs> My my journey was kind of strange. Um, I imagine there's going to be some people that do relate. Um, I previously was actually, for most of my adult life, was not in hair care at all. I actually um, did some personal training. I did this. I did that. Really, my prime focus was my kids. Um, I was in a very bad marriage, unfortunately. And what happened was is that when I realized that I needed to have a skill set that was really going to um, help my family um, and be able to get myself out of a very bad situation. I weirdly, actually funny enough, I one day got in my car, started driving, and I winded up in a parking lot. It was just one of those stressful moments that we sometimes have where we're just kind of having an outer body experience. And at 38 years old, I found myself in front of a beauty school. And I just stared at it, got out of my car and said, I want to sign up to this day. I'm not sure why (laughs) I remember when I was 16, I told my mom, I wanted to be a hairdresser. And she said, you know, good girls aren't hairdressers. (laughs) So I never pursued it when I was younger. I'm not exactly sure what really was the catalyst of going there. I like to say divine intervention. So I went through beauty school, um, for about a year. And then I found a, um, a wonderful uh, salon in on Long Island in New York that was headed by the former creative director of Into Kefure in the United States. And so I was given the privilege of really learning a skill set that was really elevated. Uh, we were really taught to discern uh, products and understanding it and um, really understanding what is it that is going to create really great hair. And it's not just the creative process, which they were still brilliant at, but it was really about the quality of the hair and doing something that was elevated. Um, Obviously this was before Olaplex came in. And uh, from there, I actually ended up moving down to Florida. uh, And I was starting as a business on my own and it was a lot different environment. Um, in New York, when you're working with a team, um, there's a lot of collaboration. You're um, getting education. Uh, it, it's just a different vibe. And then people come to the place with a certain expectation. When you move to some place and you become an independent and no one knows who you are, it was a struggle. And to be honest with you, at that time in my life, I really wanted to really focus on the craft and focus on the person. Again, I kind of felt as though considering what I went through in most of my adult life, I really wanted to give something to the person in my chair. I wanted to empower them. I wanted them to feel great about themselves. 
Um, so doing the whole thing with booking, the finances, the, you know, all that stuff, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I wanted to focus on what I was doing. Um, during that time, um, Olaplex came out. And I remember, again, I was, I always say raised by a, um, a, a brilliant man in the industry, Richard Calcasola, who really taught us to be discerning about what we were using. And so when I heard about it, I was skeptical. I was very skeptical. Also understanding with this blonde hair that I have on my head, I am not naturally blonde. (laughs) I'm actually very, very dark. (laughs) So what happened was, um, my hair actually was pretty damaged, but with, I used to have really, though it's short, I used to have very textured hair and that was very deliberate because you could disguise breakage. (laughs) So what happened was, um, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And actually a co, uh, someone that was a suite mate, someone that was actually renting as well. We both split a a, a box, an introduction travel kit to just give it a shot. And the results were immediate. It was, it was to me, it had been a hot minute since I had felt my hair feel like what it did before I started lightening my hair. Uh, it was night and day. So immediately I started incorporating it into my business and I started to get this reputation of being the healthy hairstylist. Um, and it, it really made a big difference. Now, Amongst my many skills, I like to write and I had written a blog with a coworker that, um, it's since defunct, but, uh, I wrote a blog about Olaplex because it had been out for not too long. Uh, I would say about several months and what being that it's a new technology, I found that a lot of hairstylists were not necessarily using it the correct way. And that's just me as an observer watching on social media and I was seeing frustrations. So I decided to write something that was kind of a down to earth. Hey, let's have a conversation. You know, it's freaking amazing. It's like unicorn fairy dust, all that stuff. (laughs) But you know, let's not fool us out. There you have to use it correctly, you know, and here's how you do that. This is what's going to happen if you try to add too much, you know, this is what's going to happen if you do X, push things too far. You know, we always say, you know, it's, it's not a magic wand, you know, or the other thing we love to say is, you know, if you had insurance, you know, like say on your car, you would not drive it off a cliff (laughs) just because you have insurance. So basically, um, it really, all right. I like to say it caught the eye of Dean, uh, Dean crystal, who was the founder of the company. But the bottom line is, is I may or may not have sent it to him on messenger in Facebook. I just sent him the article and said, thought you'd get a kick out of this. It went viral. It worked. It worked. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes you have to be a little bit, you know, impetuous. (laughs) It doesn't just come to you. You You have to take initiative sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And to be honest with you, I was very proud of what I wrote. So, you know, and I felt good about it. I felt like it was really speaking to the brand. So, and I, I loved it. It, it. it literally changed the way I felt. And then when my clients were in my chair, suddenly... You know, I've had people that came in that um, had to go through chemotherapy and they had finally finished and they they were able to retain their hair, you know, thank God. But the quality of it wasn't the same. And this was a way of them getting that dignity back. You know, it was it was powerful. You were having these powerful moments with these people in your chair and it was amazing. So I wanted to convey that. So, you know, I'm going along with the business, I'm getting busier and it turns out, um, I still wasn't happy. And I had a dear friend that said to me, well, what do you want? And I said, I want to work for Olaplex. I mean, they're amazing. I want to be an educator for them. Um, the next day I got a call from them for it to be an advocate, which is someone that basically we, we have an advocate program and I was a part of that first, you know, group where it was hairdressers that are really great at writing, really great on social media, um, that are passionate about it, that really loved helping people. I think that is like the key thing here, that 
it was so important to them to find people that really wanted to empower other hairstylists to get the most out of what they had. So, um, I was one of them. And I remember saying to my friend, you know, I, I, I just got offered to be an advocate. I'm like, I'm going to get a job in six months, six months later, I got offered a job. <laughs> so it, in that way, that's kind of where it was like a buildup of being in a very desperate place back in the day before I got into hairdressing. Um, really, in all honesty, it was devastating. I didn't know how to get out. I was trapped in a situation and having a, whatever that possessed me to show up in front of that school um, and then trust in whatever was in front of me. Um, was to this day still moves me because I was that girl that walked in there with long hair that hadn't been cut or colored in probably a few years, didn't wear makeup, didn't wear nice clothes. I think I had baby food on my shirt. <laughs> you know, I was a mess and yeah, it, it, it was, it gave me my dignity back. It was amazing. Well, that's incredible. And I just love how you really first it's the falling in love with the brand, which I think is the most important part of that journey, because it's a really like, no matter what and where you ended up, it's, you just knew from the beginning that this is a brand that you want to be tethered to because you believe in the products that worked for you. And then just that idea of, you know, you wrote a blog post uh, and then you found a way, you know, so was it actually the, the fact that when you messaged in the messenger, that that was a catalyst to that becoming an ambassador or was that just a, a byproduct? I or? think it put me on the radar. That's for sure. Definitely. I think yeah. it definitely put me on the radar. I think, um, I don't think I ever asked. Um. <laughs> but you know, even if, and if it was or not, it's that even I believe in like the, as you said, that the kind of like the manifestation and there's always things that we do. And I love how, I mean, when we went to Sephora with our brand, um, you know, we LinkedIn message the hair merchant, we were proactive, but similar to what you said, which I loved, it's, I was real, really proud of our brand deck. You were really proud of your blog post. So there wasn't that sense of shame of, I'm just going to like slip into the DMs, but it's like, no, there's actually like, this is worth the read. This is worth the look. Um, and sometimes you just got to be proactive. You got to just try. And then I do feel it like really it, it is really important to kind of, um, I often say, you know, you got to verbalize to actualize, you got to be able to verbalize exactly. it and, and put it out into the universe. But with that being said, there always has to be action that follows up yes. that. And a lot of times people get caught up in just, I'm going to put it out in the universe and it's going to come to me. It's going to come. It doesn't you know what? Happen. I often say the, the universe has everything I could possibly want, everything I could possibly want, but I need to get out of my own way in order to get it. it it's <laughs> and not I got to put the work in. Exactly. Yeah. No, I have I, to I learn that. the lessons and I have to do the work in order to get it. So I, I do feel like that is always been my mantra to this day. Um, I'm always saying that, um, in so many ways, I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is my life. But in the same breath, I also know, you know, I'm putting the actions in. Um, I might be exactly. putting it out there in the universe, but I am, I am doing the actions to make it happen. It comes hand in hand. And, and you can really see that because you've done so much over your career at Olaplex and the things that you, I'm going to, you're going to continue doing. I'm, I'm only can imagine. Um, but I, I, you know, we do want, I do want to go into that a bit more, but before I do, I would love just to know, so, you know, Olaplex was founded in 2014. You were one of the very first, um, you know, employees to start now this mighty company. Do you like, can you tell us a little anecdote of just the story of how Olaplex came to be or the name behind the, the reason behind the oh, name? Oh gosh. The name I think actually came partially from Dean's daughter. I think they were yeah. brainstorming like there's a complex and whatever. I'm not exactly sure how it all came to fruition, but from what I've heard, it was his daughter, um, which again, kind of goes back to it. It is, it was a family brand, you know, and yes. it was very grassroots. Um, I think the thing that caught my attention was they, they didn't do a lot of advertising, um, really, yep. it was just about communicating on social media. They really, truly believed in um, the communication that we had, because really it was what we came out with first was the number one and number two, which was our professional 
uh, products. And then yes. we eventually got the number three, not too long after. I don't think it was very long at all. The number three, which was our treatment. And that was it. And yep. so it all originally went through hairdressers. So it was really about not a lot of times you see brands and what they are doing is they are telling you what it is. They're telling you how to use it. They're telling you you're speaking at them. What yep. they believed in was having a, a push and pull. They like to have conversations. They wanted them to do their own side by sides. No, we want you to do side by sides. Tell us how those results are. We celebrated whenever they would post something and we really made it a point with our team to really look at every single post we could possibly find and acknowledge it. People want to be seen. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, we enjoyed seeing them. We would be giddy, you know, <laughs> and it would be thousands of them, but we would be giddy every single day. Did you see this? Look, we're sending it off to each other. Did you see this one? Oh my gosh, look at this person. They're amazing. Um, it didn't, it didn't matter if that was someone that was still in beauty school and they were experimenting. We were sitting there going, yay. Or it was that pro that's been doing it for 30 years and trying out for the first time. And they're like, wow, this really made a difference. Um, it was just very exciting time because you really genuinely felt as though, um, you were empowering people and it was not so much about, um, I mean, it was about obviously getting it in the hands of hairstylist, obviously, yes. but the, the sentiment behind it from everyone on that team was because we really genuinely believe that it will make a difference in their business. It will make a yep. difference in their work. And so by incorporating in this, it's going to make change your life and change your client's life. So I think that's like where we, it all kind of started. No, it's amazing because yeah, I was really, when I read about it, so it's such an inspiring journey and story from that California garage to really becoming where it is today. You can really see it's grown from the real, the customer testimonials, the word of mouth. It's the results that have spoken and built the brand because I've tried Olaplex, worked wonders for my hair. And I think it's just, you can really tell that there is something very unique about the formulas um, that just work. Even when and it comes down to the, um, the chemist that came up with it. I mean, Dean was yeah. actually, he was trying, he was doing research on stem cell research, um, to help one of his family members. And so he was going from place to place. He had a totally different business. I mean, he had a hair care business, but it was, you know, nothing to do with what he was looking for. He was looking for a solution for a medical issue. And so he was being brought to doctors, to this, to that. And, everywhere. And one of the places it stopped off was here and they hit it off and they were just talking. And, um, he was, the chemist was asking about his business and said, what was the Holy grail of all hair care? And he says, well, I, honestly, I feel like it's to really give a woman confidence by, you know, having healthy hair and not breaking. So it wasn't long after that. They said, come meet us. I have this chemist. And th this chemist worked on stuff that had to do with like transplants and stuff. It, it, it had nothing to do with hair care, but he's like, come over to my garage. And so here's this garage, you know, surfboards, lawn chairs in California. And there is this chemistry set and they created Olaplex. I mean, how cool is that? You can't, you can't, you literally, it's, it's like from a film. It's amazing. Right. It's just and incredible. then from there, I mean, they sent it off to, um, this brilliant man, Joe Santi, um, when they realized that what they had, Joe Santi had been a hairdresser for 45 years, but he did a lot of research and development for many, many companies. Um, he was globally renowned for a lot of the texture stuff that he does. And he was able to work with them to kind of brainstorm and figure out exactly the full capacity of what it was, because I think originally they thought it would just work on perms. And then they realized, no, it's, it's everything. So from there, um, Dean got, you know, with different connections was able to get Olaplex in Tracy Cunningham's, uh, salon in LA mesh salon. And Tracy Cunningham, for those who don't know who she is, she is the hairstylist of the stars. She does like Drew Barrymore, Gwen Palt Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Jennifer Lopez, you know, all the big names all go to her. And uh, 
they brought her the product and um, I've talked to Tracy a few times about it and the, I am paraphrasing at best, but she was saying that she had a client that had gone blonde and then they kind of went brunette on their own while they're in Mexico, but then they had a role. And she had to go blonde again. And she's like, girl, this isn't safe. Your, your hair is going to get destroyed, but I got the stuff. Let, you know, if you're insisting no matter what, then let's give it a go. And she said the quality of the hair was better than what it started with. So from that point on, she called up Dean and was like, I want a regular stream of supply. <laughs> Back that it was a bottle with masking tape on it saying, oh, I, I don't even know if they had a name then. It might've been the invention, which is what they originally called it. So, and then from there, it just, you know, went, you know, we winded up picking up, you know, Guy Tang, who is really well known on social media and brilliant hairdresser in his own, um, and, uh, Chad Kenyon and Bianca Hillier, who is, they all do models and stars and, uh, yeah, it, it, it's amazing the path that they were able to take to get it to where it is. And again, they really put their trust in hairdressers and understand yeah. that they would understand the chemistry um, and to give feedback. You know, I think that a lot of companies want to be infallible. And the truth is, is that, you know, you're not. Sometimes, you know, you're trying to figure things out and it was new technology. So we listened and that was really important. Super important. And, and I think as well, it's really about, like, did you see a lot of innovation within the core range throughout the, the years? Because I'm sure as you build the brand and the formulas will always adapt to the customer's needs and desires. But what I love about Olaplex is there's not many SKUs. It's like a really tight but core range. So did you see that there was a lot of maybe innovation within the years of the existing line? I, I mean, ultimately, the, the, the core of what we had originally came from was that ingredient, which is the bisaminopropyl diclycal demolate. Yep. I find a reason to say it every single interview. I can't help myself. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's a I was word. waiting for you to say it. It took a long time it. to learn it. <laughs> I, I, was like, I was like, I'm going to wait for Danielle to say that before I make a fool out of myself. <laughs> it's a long word. Incredible. Some people affectionately call it bisamino, but I, I'm I like, admit. it took me a long time to learn that word i'm gonna say I was like damn it yeah i was like i was like, not gonna try it <laughs> but so it sounds it that, sounds very legit yeah <laughs> so with that ingredient it's relinking broken disulfide bonds within the hair so i mean really what you're doing is you're strengthening the hair from the inside out so it, which changes everything it makes it easier to accept um you know protein in the hair if you need it it makes it easier to accept um um uh, moisture. You, you got to think of like inside your hair, it's a structure, right? Think of like a building and it has those steel beams that are going up and that is your structure and everything is built around it. And you can put things inside of it and floors and stuff. If those steel beams are not strong and they're breaking and fracturing or whatever, it doesn't matter what you're putting in there. It ain't sticking. You know, no. it's not going to stay. So once you've reinforced all those things, everything else comes together. So it, it really has, you know, we often care, like not kid around. We actually, it, it is a true statement. I mean, it's kind of like the equivalent of skincare for hair care. You know, yeah. it, it has changed the way that a lot of people are treating their hair because before you just shampoo and condition, you use some styling yeah. products, you're done. But now people are starting to understand in order to have you know, the hair that you're seeing on Instagram, the hair that you're seeing by celebrities, it's more than just getting the perfect color or the perfect cut. If your hair is not healthy, but you get the perfect color, it's just not going to look as good as it could be. Um, if you got it, regardless of what style you have, you know, yeah. um, you could be someone that wants to be like JLo, but you might want to be somebody that's like, you know, someone else that doesn't have something as up to date and current, regardless, if one hair is healthy and the other's not, you're going to know the difference, right? hundred percent. So in the long run, um, and I got lost, darn it. <laughs> I got lost where I was talking about. I was going somewhere with this. I got a little too into it. <laughs> no, I love that you, you were saying about the, we can cut this off, but you, you were saying about the, the direction of well, the ingredients and then. Oh, uh, yes. About... 
so, so ultimately when it comes to the rest of the line, I think it's really important for us to really consider, we want to be able to help everyone. You know what I'm saying? I mean, be able to have something that is really the great thing about our product and especially starting with the number three, I don't care if you had fine, thin hair or if you have thick, coarse, curly hair, you both can use it. And that doesn't happen often. Normally, if you have really thick, coarse hair and you have really fine, thin, straight hair, you're not using the same products. So yeah. as we have increased our line, you'll find that we always try very hard to have a benefit for all. So yes. it's really very uh, versatile. Um, it could be the difference of, you know, one person's using a lot and the other person's using very little, but yes. they're all getting a, a, a benefit from it. Amazing. And I mean, for, for people who are maybe, I would say, living under a rock or don't know about Olaplex, could you just give like a little just synthesis of the core kind of range and um, the, the steps? Uh... Well, I think, you know, it depends on what your priorities are. Um, for me, you know, I the first thing I always say is that, you know, Olaplex started from the salon. So we always encourage everybody, if you go to a salon, ask for Olaplex because when you add it into your service, it really does make a difference in whatever you're doing. And that could be getting your hair lightened, colored, uh, permed, uh, even relaxers. And you can even have it as a treatment. And um, if you're having some really serious issues, we have the more professional strength that you can have that at the salon. Um, I actually used to do that all the time right before a keratin. You know, I used to call it the yeah. heal and seal because you were really do healing that hair and then sealing it up with the keratin. Um, and then from there, you know, we have our number zero, which is like a primer for number three. It really does increase the efficacy. Number three is our flagship. You know, I mean, that one is amazing. The hair perfector. Amazing. Yeah. The hair perfector. It really does make a huge difference, uh, in the quality of your hair. Um, we usually recommend people do it like once a week, uh, that self care day that you do at home, but you can also add the number zero for really, it brings it up to, I believe, um, 68% less breakage. Um, so that really does make a big difference and that's in one use one use. So if you're a person that has hair that's thinning on the ends, uh, and, or you just can't grow it because it always gets a little bit weird on the ends, um, that's probably cause you have breakage, you know, you're it's fuller in here and thinner in here you have breakage. So this is going to stop that breakage. So your hair can grow in full and thick and beautiful. Um, now, from there, you know, we've gone on to having our shampoo and conditioner, which again, I love because they really took the time to think about everything that, I mean, I know I love, which I want a luxury experience, the scent, the, um, the lather, the cream base of the conditioner is so thick and I can't do anything too heavy on my hair. I mean, I have a lot of hair, but it's fine, but it doesn't make my hair drop you know, but yet it conditions it enough where, you know, with something with really blonde hair, you need something that conditions well. So it, it's like the perfect combination, but also they were very thoughtful in the way they did this in the sense it's very concentrated. So you don't need a lot. So that little bottle that we have, I believe it's like eight ounces somewhere around there. Um, you can get like a hundred washes out of that. Mine at 10 times, like the people that are glooping the, the shampoo into their hands in order to get a lather, you got to use a quarter of that, if not less, because if you do put a large amount, you're going to be rinsing out your hair for days. So <laughs> you want to make sure you're using very little. But the great thing is, is there's the longevity of it. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what else do we have? The um, So four and five, and then and we go six, on to the, the six. The bonds smoother. This six I'm a little obsessed with. And it's really funny because yeah. I find hairdressers understand the power of number six more than the consumer. So yeah. I think that that's something that consumers, I think, like if they understood. <laughs> uh, it is my favorite product because I live in Florida and it's very, very humid here. And it reduces uh, humidity for up to 72 hours. I... The humidity here in Florida will make my hair, you know, poof out like a dandelion if I yep. don't have the right products in. 
this product is so lightweight and it has memory so that way I can style my hair and not really put much in my hair. Um, it gives a nice, soft, glossy finish without it being heavy at all. Um, again, it's about using the right amount. You don't use too much. Um, when it comes to curly hair, you get that gorgeous, glossy curl. It's beautiful and it makes a huge difference. Um, some people will let the it air dry. I've done that. Um, and then when you blow dry, it just, you have a beautiful style and I find it lasts me for days, which is great. I haven't washed my hair in three days and I use number six. <laughs> so, and then the last is, uh, well, not last actually, sorry. I keep on forgetting we're adding on the number seven, which is our oil. And that is a great heat protected, protects your hair. And that's the thing that I think everybody needs to understand is that if you're blow drying your hair, if you're flat ironing, curling, you need to be using heat protectant. And the great thing is it's so incredibly lightweight. It doesn't matter if you have fine hair or thick hair, it's going to benefit both. So um, that's a huge benefit. And then the number eight, which is our mask, and it's like awesome, uh, great for moisture and um, very lightweight. And I love it. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm just like, I'm trying to spew it all out. Uh, I think the last one that we have, which is a salon service. So you would have to go to a salon if you really are desperate for moisture, a lot of moisture in one shot. That's where you go. It's called the four in one. And that really does make a huge difference in the hair as well. But all of them have the bisaminopropyl diclycal demoliate, which really does help to repair the hair. Um, all in different degrees, obviously. The number three and the number zero is the one that you're going to do for real intensive repair. But the rest of it, 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 everything serves a purpose. And we try really hard as we come out with more to think, really be thoughtful about those things. Um, that was the best uh, deep deck well, overview into the products. So thank you. I, I literally, you know, I, Thankfully I've seen it wasn't all the too much. I've been going on forever. <laughs> I know, you know, that's why you can tell you're a pro at this and the spokesperson because that was the most perfect synthesis. But I know on the website as well, people can check it out on Olaplex and see all the products as well. But you've pretty much summed it up amazingly. I do want to actually learn from you how to pronounce. So is it bisamina pro? Let, let's go through that. Okay. You tell me how to say so, it. Everyone bisamino. <laughs> bisamino propyl. Dicolicol. 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 Demoliate. Demoliate. Bisamino propyl. Dicolicol. Dicolicol. Demoliate. All right. All right. So I'm I learned it by creating a jingle. I had to sing it. Bisamino propyl. Dicolicol. Demoliate. <laughs> <I love. laughs> okay. I'm going to back this. I actually think it head. was from Phineas and Ferb because I have boys and they <sighs> all watch Phineas and Ferb. So it was the, you know, douche and schmortz, whatever. I did it to that jingle. <laughs> Well, now you should make a TikTok song out of it and okay, make it go viral. Know, right. I should. I should. You should. You should. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will. I will be one of the first people posting it once I've done it. Love it. Um, and I, I, you know, before we kind of go a bit more into your story and your journey, I just want to kind of talk about the sustainability part because it's super important to me, and I love how Olaplex really has a strong mission to put the environment first and just beyond you know formulating responsibly um i know you guys have done incredible work um do you have do you want to share anything about it from yeah, what your point i can of view? share um is that one of the wonderful things that i've seen and, and this was also started by dean and darcy as well they were very conscientious about you know limiting waste in general. And for, as a small company, you know how the hard that can be, you know, it's, exactly. it, it, there's an expense to it. It's, it's not easy, but yeah. from there, um, what I've seen with Jui Wong, um, who is our CEO, she is absolutely incredible. She is committed to really not, not creating a problem within the world. She's, she, I actually, you know, if I was to be completely candid, absolutely love her. She, <laughs> she seems amazing. I love her. She's, she's in everything that she, she's very thoughtful in all of those processes. She wants to make sure that we are doing the right thing for the planet, doing the right thing for people as a whole. Um, and not really, um, it's so easy to look at the, the, the money, you know, um, the dollar signs and, and pretend yeah. you don't see the rest of it. Um, it's important to her that we are making a difference in that regard. 
But no, it's so, so true. Well, I mean, Olip, I'm just so excited for now with the recent IPO. It's just so exciting. I know the future is so bright for Olaplex and for you as well working in the company. Um, but I do want to go a little bit more into kind of your routine for success and how you, Danielle, stay motivated every day. So can you share like what's your kind of average routine like? Well, I'll be honest, with you, I, from the start of working with Olaplex, I, I've worked from home. So it, I uh, always telecommuted. So it, this has been um, pretty easy in that regard. Um, when it comes to growth, I think that, in, at least for me, it's really important to, you know, learn as many skills as you can. Um, keep your ears open. Find your mentors because mentors really do make a difference. Um, and remember to always honor them as we go along. So, <laughs> cause in all honesty, it's Love so that. easy to grow. Um, yes. and then just be like, okay, you know, now I'm going to move on. Um, no, always remember those mentors because they, they make a huge difference in, in impact on your life. Um, but as you're going along, I think that Aside from learning as many skills as you possibly can, don't be afraid. Oh, you're going to laugh. There's so many things I've had to learn on YouTube or Honestly, it's Googling the best, one of the something. Best platforms. Love that. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes it's very funny. You know, we, we were talking about podcasts and whatnot. One of the people that I wanted to have on the podcast, and I actually have a call with her later today, um, is talking about imposter syndrome which is, you know, people that are, feel as though they are not up to the task or they're kind of faking it, so to speak. I can honestly say for the most part in every single aspect of this job, when I first started it, I was faking it. <laughs> you know, yep. when I first got hired and I was supposed to help out with Instagram and on Facebook and on our social media platforms, I was on there, but I really didn't know how to utilize it very well. So I had to learn and I hustled to learn how to do it well. Um, when it came to our education team, I think that, I, and I, and I want to be able to give myself credit for this. And Julie often speaks of it as well. So many of us have a level of emotional intelligence that a lot of people don't give credit for. You know, they don't get credit. The truth is, is that if you have an understanding and a connection with your audience, you're already halfway there. And if you are leading with integrity and you're leading with kindness, that also is huge. Do no harm. And I think that um, you're never going to please everybody, but even with those people, you know, you, you want to just kind of be as kind as you can. You just don't know what's going on in our, their lives. So that is how we've always practiced. And as we've grown and, um, now going on to, um, working with doing the QVC and the podcast and, and all of that, I think the interesting thing I going on camera was not something I ever thought of doing. The truth is, is that, um, anytime there was an opportunity to go on camera, I was typically trying to throw other people on, um, I was kind of forced to do it, um, at one point, um, with a good friend of mine. And, um, I was lucky enough to have someone that saw something in me that I didn't necessarily recognize, um, which of course, part of that is my passion for not just the brand because you, you have to have a passion for what, who you're representing. Um, because when you, when you're working with good people, it, it, you can't help but feel good about it, you know? Um, but also a passion to really want to be of service. So before, when I was in professional, it was about being in service to these professionals. It was really trying to find new ways to give back, to give them information, to give them education, um, regardless if it was Olaplex or not, we wanted to be able to give back and, and empower them. Now that I'm, I'm on this side, it's kind of like full circle. You know, I started as a hairdresser wanting to empower the person that was in my chair went on to professional. And now I'm back to talking to virtually people that are in my chair right now and me yeah. being able to say to them, you know, I know what it feels like to feel 
insecure about the way I look or insecure about my hair because at one point or another, my hair was breaking or, you know, I didn't know what the heck I was doing with it. Um, and to be able to say, you know, I see you, I see you and I feel you and I want to be able to guide you in the right way. And, uh, part of that is going to salons and, and talking to your hairstylist about Olaplex. And the other part is taking care of your hair at home, much like you would take care of your skin or eat healthy or exercise. It, it, it does something for your self-esteem and your confidence. And let's face it, your hair is that one accessory you're carrying around no matter where you go. You can't get rid of it. So let's put it out there as best as we can. So beautifully said and wise words that I think we should all really listen to and abide by, especially as a hair care brand founder myself. Um, those things are very important. So people also, often focus as a on skin. hair care brand representative, yeah. Yep. Here's the thing that I also think I'm going to give you a piece of advice. <laughs> I find that when you, when you're hiring, look for those passionate people. Yes. The passionate people, let me tell you, they will work their bums off for you. They will work. If you, if you are, if you believe in people and they will learn the skill set. skills can be taught any day of the week any day of the week with someone with a moderate level of intelligence, but passion for what they see and in commitment to it and wanting to give back that can't be bought. That's no. something that you either have or you don't. So Couldn't agree more. that's my piece of advice. <laughs> And that's, you know, I needed brand. to hear that. I needed to hear that because we are going through hiring right now. And it's literally like a reminder of like, hang on, you know, one of the protocols should be like, have you tried Fable Domain? Before you even apply, please try Fable Domain or try Olaplex and then come back to the interview if you like the products, you know, because it's important that they advocate and they really do understand the brand from the products down, you know, and then bring it up. Yeah. It. So it's very important. Very, very important. So thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> before we go into fire round questions, I do have a question I ask all my guests and it's um, about, you know, travels opening up and TSA is being a little bit trickier than normal. So they're saying, Danielle, you can travel, but you can only bring one Olaplex product. So what's your go-to product for you? I, it would have to be the number six. Yes. That, I know I mean, that like for, for Olaplex, I mean, normally you would say number three, you know, because number yeah. three or the number zero, number three, um, is your yeah. reparative, you know, and it's going to protect yeah. your hair and it's going to make it stronger, but I'm going to be blunt. I use the only Olaplex. Smoother. Yeah. I only use Olaplex. So my hair is strong. If I have to travel and I can only pick one, I'm going to pick the thing that's going to keep my hair from frizzing out because <laughs> as soon as it, 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 hour it, protection is needed. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it detects moisture, it's like, -da -da. ooh, moisture. <laughs> and my hair will expand. It just does that. So, you know, and then on top of it, I can get a beautiful style. My hair is smooth and silky and it's shiny. Yeah. So, yeah, it'd be number six. <laughs> very, very good. I love that. Um, so, fire round questions. Um, first thing that comes to your mind uh, what's um, another beauty brand, personally, you as Danielle, that you're loving right now? Oh gosh. Um, when it comes to skincare, I've been loving Kate Somerville. Um, mm. I love her skincare line. Um, um, funny enough, their CEO was formerly with us as well. And that's how I found out about it. Cause I, I am, I often say I'm in certain regards, I'm still learning a lot of yeah. stuff, but, um, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. But I've, I've used them and I've also used inky. Um, which I've been enjoying yeah. as well. Oh, nice. Uh, what's a guilty pleasure of yours? Oh, guilty pleasure. Let me think about that. Um, TikTok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to think about that and I'm like, how am I? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when I have to decompress, like after a long day, I will just sit there and just scroll through. I yeah. could do that. Like I could get trapped. It is it, dangerous. It, I mean, they a it lot knows of people you. say, Oh, it's such you. a young app and everything. I'm like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. I have yeah. to stop myself from saying, so, you know, 
I saw something on TikTok, like TikTok. a piece of information. And I'm sitting there going, I can't say it was on TikTok. Should I say it was yeah. from the news? news. Oh, no. I just say, some people, I mean, to be honest, it is a, it's a news platform. It's it's, I mean, you, you can have so much. It depends, obviously, what kind of content they're showing you. But usually it's one of the most informative and educational platforms today. Um, you know, it's just I'm surprised. I mean, you have to be to careful get. of what you're seeing. You can see misinformation. You could see good information. Yeah, exactly. But it, exactly. It, if at the very least it could be thought provoking, where you yes. might go and do your own research like hey i didn't know that that's really interesting let me google it you know and start yeah. doing your own research but I, mm -hmm. I do find that like i've learned a lot of interesting things that i didn't know when i tried on my own and was like oh that that was real yeah. and then also the entertainment factor i'm sorry there's just some people that are just funny they're funny yeah. <laughs> I, I, I i think it's one of the most uh, guilty pleasures of mine too. So I, I'm with you on that. Um, but what are you currently watching or reading? I have been um, on TV. I have been watching um, on Hulu. Uh, Murders only in this building. It has Selena okay. Gomez and Martin Short Ooh. and uh, and uh, um, Steve Martin. And I've been enjoying it. It's it's a little bit slow going at first. And then I've been watching reruns of Veronica Mars. I don't know. I've been watching these murder things that are very fluff in many ways, not like real true crime, but but yeah. yeah I don't know. Nice. <laughs> That's what I've been watching. <laughs> and and for reading, um, it's been more sporadic lately than I care to admit, but I tend to read I could tell you the genre. I tend to read a lot of yeah. self help. Um yeah. in the sense of um really learning how to create focus. I can be scatterbrained sometimes. So I'm always learning, trying to find new skill sets to kind of focus, um, create plannings. I always like to try and improve all the time. I'm always doing little self checks quarterly, um, yep. to see how my progression is because if I let it go and like, you know, a lot of people, new year's, they sit there and they go, oh, you know, I want to accomplish the X, Y, and Z, and they never revisit again. Um, exactly. I like to do it quarterly. I have my quarterly date with myself where I sit down and kind of go, okay, I wanted to work on this skill set. How am I doing with it? Maybe I have to pivot. So I do a lot of books to kind of figure out what it is that I need to pivot. Sometimes it's even just skill sets for work. Um, you know, improving on something that has to do with presentation. Maybe it's spreadsheets. I don't know. It could be anything. Um, what is your favorite social media platform? I think I already know the answer, but it's going to be TikTok right now. That's going to be TikTok. TikTok right I mean, now. we already know I, that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm on Facebook and, and I, you know, and on Instagram and I have a lot yeah. of followers on there. I mean, I say a lot. It's not like, you know, no, a you lot. Do. You do. <laughs> I have a decent amount and it, and I, and admittedly, I probably should be trying harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's always but that catch twenty two. It it I enjoy them, but there's something about the quick fix of TikTok that appeals to yeah. my um I don't know if I have ADD or not, but I feel like I should. <laughs> <laughs> and last question is if you want in you know beauty uh in the beauty industry or as a hairstylist before, what would you be doing today that's in a completely different field? Ooh. That's a good question. I, I really, you know, it's very funny because I've noticed throughout my career in life in general, um, regardless of what job I was doing in some way or another, I was always trying to find a way to empower a person. Um, yes. like I said, even when I was in the fitness industry and I was in there for a good 15 years, um, it was literally about having those one-on-one -on -one connection moments where you're like, you can do this you know, you can be the best version of yourself. So I don't know what that would translate into, but I could imagine it would ultimately go there because I, I do believe in the human spirit and the power of it and the growth of it. And that, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, and, and again, this is speaking from personal experience. I had some major, major roadblocks, um, during my marriage, it, it was not a pretty situation. We, we had times where we didn't have food. We had times where we didn't have a, like, we were afraid if we were going to have a roof over our head. And you really do think that your self-worth is down to nothing. And so I kind of want to really communicate to people that 
everybody has the opportunity. You already have that worth. You're already at a hundred percent. You're already a hundred percent wonderful, perfect the way you are. But we inside sometimes can't actualize everything on the outside, you know, and bring everything together. It's almost too much information. And I love being that person to kind of like, kind of go, no, it's okay. Slow down, breathe. You're wonderful. And yes, there are steps that you can take and you are, you can do it. You're capable. You're completely capable. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> uh, I'm in, you are amazing. I mean, literally, I can't wait to see you in person because you're just so inspiring. And I had this, I remember when I finished my podcast, the Olaplex Speed and Cover podcast, I, I left and I just felt so inspired by your your, I mean, I, w I want to say presence because it's virtual, but your aura, your energy, and even just hearing you now, I have literally goosebumps. So, Aww. I mean, I, I you, you know so what? I'm, I'm in my own journey still. Like, I'm still figuring but, things out. I got to work out more and lose some weight. You know, that COVID thing. No, but, 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 <laughs> but everything, you know, we all go through that. I mean, that's, but you're just yeah. so real, genuine, and you really exude just like, self-love and help you just gra you're amazing just amazing and i can't you know wait what? to when you see you when you person. don't have a lot at some point or another and then you are you're taking the steps in the process to get to a better place you yeah. start to if, if you can have that moment of gratitude for each it's not about the end destination it's the journey, the journey. i'm so exactly. grateful for the journey i get to go on yep. yeah, even the bad stuff that's yep. making me stronger i'm learning me. something exactly. from it so yep. it's in all honesty, it's, um, I have such gratitude and so, yeah, a little uh, happy go lucky. And, and you know, you said it, it before, be you're, you're, <laughs> you No, know, but you said it before you're constantly, you're still learning. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's your understanding. This is a journey. This is, you know, every day we, we become better versions of ourselves and we're, you know, we, we're also giving that to the universe and yeah, just everything. And I hope I is, get to do that on. until I'm a hundred years old. Every day learning I, something. I really new. hope you do too, because the world needs more Danielle's as, as long as Aww. we can get it. So, uh, thank you <laughs> for sharing your j inspiring journey. Um, more about the brand Olaplex, which is one of my favorite hair care brands, and um, can't wait to see how you grow, how Olaplex grows. And in the meantime, where can everyone follow both yourself and Olaplex and oh, well, the socials? And Olaplex, absolutely. You can go on um, Olaplex on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it, you can find it. You can go to olaplex.com if you want to get more information about the products. I'm on most of my platforms. I'm on Danielle E. Frank on most of my platforms. Twitter is not because there's somebody by the name of Daniel Lee <laughs> Frank. <laughs> he already got my name, so I can't use that. But, um, oh. but for the most part, you can find me on any of those places. Please, you know, reach out to me, ask me questions. I'm always happy to talk to people. Um, and then, uh, other than that, also Beauty Uncovered, where we do a podcast yes. that we are really looking to focus on beauty, health, and wellness, and give different perspectives on things, whether it be, you know, we'll talk about skincare, you know, makeup, hair care, um, fitness, wellness, um, mental wellness. You know, we, again, we were talking about imposter syndrome. I just spoke to someone about really working on flexing the muscle of your confidence because, you know, it's a muscle and that people are not naturally confident. You have to work at it, you know? <laughs> and it, it, again, it goes back to Akash. I, Akash, I'm, I'm so blessed. I mean, I get to do that. I get to do that. How cool is that? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I understand because I, I get to do the same with people like you. And it's just, it's such a, an honor and a privilege to just be around these you know, inspiring stories and journeys and just spreading the love. So I will put all the, the links in the summary um, to the, the socials and also the podcast and my episode in the podcast so everyone can go listen mm. to it. And, which um, we had meantime, so much fun. Which I we loved so that conversation. I mean, I, I, want, I talked about you time. for like three days to all of my coworkers. <laughs> they were sick of me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same about you. So we, we, we did that together. So oh, thank you. And um, in the meantime, uh, I wish you all the best. Um, I'm sure we'll meet in person very soon. We're going to make it happen. And yes. um, we'll just be in touch. And I can't thank you enough for being on here. So thank you. Thank you so much, Akash. I really enjoyed it.